Alright guys, and we are back with more Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. We are about to start this back up once again. And I believe we were, I think we were closing in. He, I think he was about to confess about what he did that day in the locker room. So let's go ahead and start from the safe point. Hopefully we don't have another testimony. Now then, Officer Marshall, are you ready to tell us the truth? Oh, another testimony. <laughs> Looks like I underestimated y'all. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, if you were only half as persistent then as you are today, we all wouldn't have to be, well, we wouldn't have to be here today. Now, would we? What does he mean by that? Officer Marshall, tell the court what you did. All of it. All right. Seems the time has come. Marshall's confession. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out. It managed to escape. I knew which errors wouldn't be caught on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 515. Okay, so all this... All this sounds really, really solid. So the supposed victim was really you. But there's one thing I still don't understand. Large quantities of blood traces were found on the floor of the evidence room. Was that, uh, Meekins? If no one was murdered, then how could that be? Officer Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is that he's the donor. It's like too much blood for that. <laughs> Marshall's confession. I had to do it. That day I couldn't just stand by and let it die. What is he talking about? Is he possibly talking about SO9? Do you even have to ask, partner? The SO9 incident. Two years have passed since that case had or was closed. It was going to or it's going to completely end with the transfer of that day. Not if I have anything to do with it. That incident's not over. But what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When a case is closed. Only the detective who was in charge of it can look through it. The evidence, I wanted to have a look at it myself one more time. No matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner. That case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of that investigation. Why does he care so much about it? That day was my last chance. That's why I... I think we need to take a look at the SO9 incident stuff again. I stole the detective IDs and dressed up like him. I plan to take out the evidence. Let's continue to press him here. Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? If I didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out the evidence transfer, I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to fool the security camera. And the detective's ID card? I stole that the morning of the incident. That really was why Goodman started filing out that lost item report. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the prosecutor's office parking lot. The ID card I found was left there by Officer Marshall. So essentially, he managed to succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? I mean, the fingerprint activated lock, of course. No matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Normally, that locker shouldn't have opened. So it was because a rubber glove was stuck in the door by chance. That is true, because had Jake Marshall even understood, like, the mechanics behind the lockers, I don't think he would have even attempted to go into the evidence locker room. He would have found a different way to go around it. To, to go about getting the evidence, or opening up the, um, that, the evidence locker again. Then Detective Goodman must have opened the locker before Officer Marshall. Look at that. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out. Knocked his ass out with a good sure you can FADC in the Ultra. He pulled a knife on Officer Meekins and tried to drive him off. Let's just say I was a little surprised. Only planned on being in the evidence room for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins certainly is a one in a million type of person, mistaking a detective for an intruder and demanding to be shown his ID. 
I'm gonna have to think a little more about his raise this year. <laughs> when did Edgeworth get so much influence? <laughs> anyway, he threw himself at me and I ended up cutting him slightly. I'm sorry it had to turn out that way. With me knocking him out and everything. By the way, what happened to your knife? Oh, you mean this one? Uh, I don't know what to say. Huh? So what happened next? No one's gonna question why he has a damn knife inside the courtroom. They managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. Let's press him on everything. We want to be safe. So you did do your research beforehand. Those who got into the desert unprepared don't live long, partner. I didn't think it would make a difference, though. The security tape is erased every six hours. If all had gone as planned, no footage would have been left. However, you blooded your coat and your str or excuse me, you blooded your coat and your struggle with Officer Meekins. If something or someone was in the security room when I had came out, the jig would have been up. I opened my locker and stashed it in there. What was Officer Meekins doing that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So what you're saying is, on that day, there wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. Press him on it. But the blood found at the scene certainly indicates a crime took place. What are you, blind? That blood was from Meekins. The victim shown on that tape is me, and I'm not dead yet, partner. So you stole the evidence from the locker? Actually, no I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone! What? Mr. Edgeworth? Where is the evidence? It's still missing, your honor. Oh my god! There's another person behind that? Detective Gitman's locker was already empty. Someone else stole the evidence. Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? Fire away, partner. It's a free country. Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Stealing a detective's ID? Injuring a police officer? This is no small offense! Moreover, you're an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. It just can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are ever a valid solution. <laughs> like I said, this isn't your case. This one is mine. And I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Hmm. The witness has an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. I just can't forget the SL9 incident. You know why? Let's ask him why. Let's press him. But that case was solved two years ago, wasn't it? Yup, yup. That's the reason the evidence was stored in the evidence room. Joe Dark was convicted for those crimes. One thing I can say for sure, he deserved his sentence. I remember that the Joe Dark case. It seen, or excuse me, it involved serial murders, didn't it? I don't intend to complain about how it turned out, but there's something that still bothers me. Something went down at that trial. Something no one will talk about. What happened? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. Why is he so concerned with that incident? Maybe I should press him or present him with something I think is real, what his real reason is, huh? I had a feeling we'd wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some way to that case. I better take another look at the files. Phoenix is the only one not related to that case. Literally everybody that we met was involved with that case. Freaking Edgeworth, Marshall, oh uh, who else? Can we look at the profiles? I don't think we can look at the profiles right now. No, we can't look at the profiles. But anyway, everybody that we met, Angel Star, Freaking the, the KFC guy, I forgot his name because it's been like two days since we actually saw him. Uh, the KFC chief prosecutor, Damon Gant. Freaking, uh, I don't know about Meekins. Uh, Emma. Uh, Lana. Probably the judge, too. He probably had an afro back. No, no, I said back then. I don't even know. That was two years ago. He probably still had the same hairstyle. But back then, almost every character that we met has something to do with that damn case. So let's see, let's go through our evidence to see what we need to present. Oh, we probably have to... This is the only thing I think we can present, the SO9 incident. So let's present it. Oh, damn it! Damn it! No, 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 no! Yo, 
Your Honor, I meant to present that at the end of his statement. Your Honor, please, please, Your Honor, don't penalize me, man. I must be, I must be on the wrong track. No, I meant to present it when he talked about the SL9 case. That's when we present the SL9 files, right? I wasn't paying attention to where I was. <laughs> Officer Marshall, I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about the SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I have the SL9 incident file right here. Uh, uh, it's real, sucker. It's real when I do this. You hear that? I'm flicking the paper. And the phone is ringing. Whose phone is that? Who's got that phone on? I don't know. Unavailable unknown number. Hell no, I'm not picking that up. The name Marshall is mentioned in here. It is? In a list of murder victims. That's right. Neil Marshall, are you related to this man? Neil Marshall? Yeah, I'm sure you've heard that name two years ago. Oh, he received the same lousy pros prosecutor award you got. What? A prosecutor? He must be talking about the king of prosecutors. So was that the other guy inside that photo? When it showed the Angel Star, uh, Detective Goodman, and it showed, uh, what's his name? Jake Marshall, and I guess that was his brother that was shown in the other photo. Like, if you remember me, I was like, hey, there's Jake, there's Angel, and that's, uh, Goodman. But who's the other guy? We couldn't really point him out. I'm guessing that was his brother. Now I remember. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He was a prosecutor. He handled the SL9 case before I did. That's right. He was killed, and the case fell into your hands. But what's his relation to you? He was my brother. Oh, brother! Yo, that looks like Nick. That looks... <laughs> look at him. That doesn't look like Phoenix right without the spiky hair, kinda. He was investigating the murders with Damon Gant, chief detective at... Uh, detective at the time. The group of detectives I was part of worked under them. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. Whoa! Joe Dark. My brother fought Dark and was killed. That was the first time Dark left behind any evidence. That's, was, that was all we needed. He was uh, arranged and incarcerated. The case was finally closed. At least according to the public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dark. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it? That's your reason for your insane actions? There's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me. Gavel! Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. I want to know more about the SL9 case. That was the last day the SL9 case could be reopened. Not satisfied with this re uh, resolution, Officer Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. <laughs> Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mystery has finally been cleared off. No murder took place at the police department that day. <laughs> the things that happened by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time as the murder at the prosecutor's office, this fake murder was going on at the police department. Chance? It's gotta be more than just that. Gavel! So if no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime, that means the murder in the prosecutor's office parking lot was the real one. I st what I still don't get is... Why did they assume it was Goodman? You know what, never mind, because he did go in there, but... I don't understand how they could just sit there and say that it was Goodman that was murdered when they couldn't even find a body. They didn't even find a body. That's, that's one thing that's kind of, um... Kind of weird to me. Why would the police, like, make a statement saying that the body was found in, uh... The damn room. Or the damn evidence room. 
even though he wasn't found in the evidence room. That's weird. And no, there was no, there was no, what the hell? That doesn't make any sense. It's like no one died, but yet they try to say Detective Goodman died there. That means the murder in the prosecutor's office parking lot was the real one. I, I, I don't know. There's more to it. There's more to it. Let's just proceed. Which in turn means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky. No! But wait! A verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial. Which is why we examined the incident at the police department today. But there's only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remained the mystery of the sim simultaneous murder at the police department. It seems to me this boy's got the draw on your got the draw on you, partner. Excuse me, okay, excuse me. All the mysteries at the police department have been uncovered. No contradictions. Remain! I love how they just said, no contradictions, pause, 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 remain. <laughs> the murder took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lana Scott. There were no errors in the testimony of the witness, Angel Starr. If you have a response, make it one word or less. OBJECTION! Oh! <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> oh man, you just embarrassed Phoenix Wright. It seems this trial has reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time. Disapproving the alleged murder at the police department. Hmm. There's no doubt what I proved today is true. The apparent murder on the security camera tape was really fake. But I didn't realize... That would end up proving Lana guilty. Now then, the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Wait! How is it? Who is it? Emma? Your Honor? Wait a minute. Emma? Defense has an objection. A scientific objection. Right? What do you mean, right? Mr. Wright? Are you this girl's guardian? Your Honor, oh, uh, in a sense, please, Your Honor, all I'm asking is for a minute of your time. Please hear me out. Mr. Edwards, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. I'll give you three minutes. Three minutes. I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out the SL9 incident referred to the Joe Dark killings. Now that she mentions it, the names of both Sky Sisters were in that file. Hmm. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. So I knew his fingerprint had nothing to do with the crime. That left only one thing, the other handprint. You mean the traces of blood found on Detective Gumshoe's locker? But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured if I examined it Scientifically, I'd be sure to find a clue. So I ran over there and again and looked. Huh? So did you find anything? Um, no. Huh? Sorry, I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Um, is that all? Please don't be mad. I'm just a high school student. And I'm just an attorney. But Mr. Wright, those traces of blood are the only clue we have. If we can't find something wrong with them, please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone can save Lana, it's you. Me? Oh, boy. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright. In regard to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Um, it appears that... The defense is troubled by the other blood mark. Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright, I'm sorry, I can't be of more use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lana will be... Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Yes, Your Honor. If I ever... 
I've needed to concentrate is now. If I've ever what? If oh, that's if. If ever I needed to concentrate is now. Oops, I thought that was I. I don't know why. What could be wrong with that handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker? Could it be something I'm missing? I object. Objection. We gotta object. There's gotta be something about that. The handprint left at the crime scene clearly shows a contradiction. The only thing that seems clear is you're grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been staring pretty intently at those floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, this is strange. Take a good look at these floor plans. Something is missing. What is Phoenix saying? Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn on there? Yes, something that, when drawn, will completely change the meaning of the blood mark. What? What is the meaning of this? Let us pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, there's got to be something I can use. The question is, which item can prove something is missing in the floor plan? Something is missing in the floor plans. What's the floor uh, the floor plans? Oh, you know what? You know what's missing on there? I <laughs> I think it's the blue badger, right? Cuz it's not even shown on the floor plans. Now, if we look at the floor plans, we got the puddle of blood, we got the lockers with the uh, handprints, but we don't see the blue badger. Okay, okay, let's show the blue badger. Let's see if that's it. What about that piece of plywood? The blue badger, mascot of the police force. Defender of Truth, Guardian of Proof. <laughs> Defender of Truth, Guardian of Proof. I love that. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Please look at the floor plans of the scene of the crime. The Blue Badger is not here. So? So watch what happens when we put him in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Well? Well, what? How could the blood? How can the blood print get there? How how did the damn handprint, or you know the blood, the the bloody stains of the handprint get there if the blue badger was in the way? It would be impossible to place a handprint at this spot on the locker. What? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Let's get high! Let's get high! He find another contradiction! Let's get high! <laughs> Just what exactly was that? Does that mean? It means it can't be done. What are you saying? Blood traces were undeniably found on that locker. Don't look at me. I didn't put it there. Mr. Wright, think it through scientifically. On that afternoon, Officer Meekins was the one who brought the blue badger to the evidence room, right? After he put it down, it would be impossible to have a, a to leave a handprint on that locker. So that must mean this blood mark was left there before the blue badger was brought in, therefore, whoever was the first one to enter that day, 7777, that motherfucker is the real killer. Just one moment, I would not allow such far-fetched balderish in my courtroom. It's just like I said before, guys. It may sound far-fetched, your honor, but it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, in the police department's evidence room, blood was spilled not once, but twice. But how? One time was captured on this tape, taken by the security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand from which a trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is, the other time, someone bled prior to the struggle shown on this tape. It had to have been Detective Goodman when he was really murdered. What? What is this? That's ridiculous! I refute you! I refute this damn hype music! 
the murder portrayed in the security tape has been proven to be fake. However, that does not explain the blood mark found on the locker. No! Stop getting hype! This is when I lose momentum. So then, assuming this murder you purport really happened, when did it take place? I demand you show evidence that proves it occurred. And you know what? I already know. Like I said before, the 7777 showed on the record probably would have been the killer. So you know what we got to do? We got to present the ID card record. Let's get hype. When did the first incident occur? Gavel! To surmise the defense claims that prior to Officer Meekins being cut by Jake Marshall, who was disguised as Detective Goodman, another incident took place in that evidence room. The blood mark in the locker proves this. Very well, then tell us, when did this first in incident occur? Proof must be presented. Proof that shows when the murder took place? The ID card record, of course. Brain blast. There's only one piece of evidence that can show that. Now then, will the defense please present this evidence? What shows when the first crime took place? I don't even need to doubt myself cause here we go. ID card, yes, yeah. <laughs> if the crime took place inside the evidence room, then that perpetrator would have had to been had entered the room. In order to do so, an ID is also required. An ID card? Oh! The ID card record. Duh! 77777. Officer Meekins brought the blue badger panel into the evidence room at Let's see here, 450. If the crime took place before that time, then it would be 440 p.m. Ah! Ah! Miles Edgeworth! Just what have you done? I never figured you had nerve, boy. Put off the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Huh. Nope, I ain't getting it. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminol test that blood was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice this blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away by the real murderer. I would have just, I would have had just 10 minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away, and clean up the body. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. That would mean. The crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. So let's look at the chart again. 7777. Seven, seven. Talk about a lucky number. But wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Officer Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there's no record of his car being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with 777777! Gavel! Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this ASAP! Find out whose ID number is 777777! That's one seven too many, Your Honor. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm unable to look up the owner of that ID card. At least at present. What? Explain yourself, son. The ID number 7777777 belongs to someone with the rank of captain of or higher. Someone who is so-called ex executive officer. You know who it is? It's probably Damon Grant or whatever you call his name. Damon Gant. Any money. He's the only other dude we know with a higher up security pass. And they wouldn't introduce someone, a, a new character this late into the case. So this, this has to be Damon. Demon, but that's ridiculous. Just how? I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. Calm your tits. There's one situation in which we can be granted such authority. If an official charge fled, or excuse me, if an official charge filed against an executive is accepted, an official charge. You're all like, aren't you? With your cover-ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor's office operates. Oh my god, was it his brother a prosecutor? So what the hell, he's talking about his own brother. I take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask a question. Yeah? No, not to you, to her, the defendant sitting over there. Your own little executive. Lana? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. 
Of course we've looked up her ID number. And it's not 77777777. Don't play me for a fool, partner. That's not what I want to ask. All I want to know is one thing about the incident. Oh, go, 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 go. Give me one second, guys. Phone call. Alright guys, and we are back with more Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, and I'm sorry, I had to answer that call, it was, it was about my sister's dorm room, but you know what, we're not gonna go into that, it was just a personal phone call, it was really stupid, I had to look up my sister's number cause I forgot it, <laughs> it took me like three minutes to look for it, but we are back, and we are about to see what's going on, all I want to know is one thing about that incident, the SL9 incident, answer me this, Chief Prosecutor, in that trial two years ago, did you really only use legitimate evidence? Uh-oh, to be continued? Oh, she's on the, uh... Do you need the witness to repeat his question, Chief Prosecutor? I'm trying to think of the word, the stand. The, she's on the stand, yeah, the stand. I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution for that trial. And I got paid the big bucks. Occasionally, we felt the powerlessness of the law. At least I did. Huh? L L Lana! I became a prosecutor in order to suppress crime with the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defended? Just what are you saying? I'll ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look at me, an investigator in that crime, in the eye, and say that you did? Chief Prosecutor, you didn't! I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Why don't you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. It is what it is. We did what we had to do in order to for him to get the verdict he deserved. But Lana, even if it involves forging evidence, let's go. <gasps> oh my God, you forged evidence. See, that's what I'm talking about. No, no, Edgeworth. Order, order in the goddamn court. Everybody, calm your asses down! Lana's remarks caused such a stir. The chaos in the courtroom could not be quelled. Chairs flying everywhere. Rock bottoms. Stone cold stunners. FUs. And just, it was madness, it was chaos. The judge even whipped people with his beard. <laughs> the mad chaos. The sheer chaos that had just happened. Chairs flying all over the place. <laughs> all right guys so i think it's time for us to save the game take a short break and once we come back we'll be back with more phoenix right ace attorney i'll see you guys soon it was madness it was madness <laughs> chairs are just flying everywhere <laughs> 